Chapter 3 Someone was knocking on Paget's door. She figured it was probably the landlord asking if this month's check was going to bounce again. It was his way of asking her for the rent. Plus, the question was usually legitimate with most of the tenants here. Dragging herself from her nap on the couch, which she had needed after an extra long shift at the cafe, she released the locks and pulled it open. What? Max stood there, hand half raised to knock again, the other holding what looked to be a music instrument case. He looked Paget up and down. Hi? Paget's face instantly flushed, and she knew she wasn't going to be looking pretty in her cut-off sweats made into shorts with an I Heart New York t-shirt. It didn't help that she was braless, or makeupless, or probably had an imprint from the couch cushion on her face. Did I forget something? The stars? Max raised an eyebrow. You said you wanted to learn about the constellations. Was that tonight? Paget couldn't honestly remember. Between nervously waiting to hear if she'd gotten the coveted early broadcasting position, working extra hours at the cafe, and studying for school, she was wiped. She had probably agreed to do this when he was being her perfect study buddy, and she had forgotten. She felt so bad for the mistake. I'm so sorry. Let me get changed. We can do it another time if it's better for you, Max offered. No. Paget knew she would probably forget about it again, and it had sounded really interesting when he'd talked about it. Plus, she had now gotten some sleep, so she was wide awake. Give me two minutes. Paget rushed into her bedroom, grabbed a bra. The t-shirt could stay, but she added a hoodie and swapped out the ugly sweatshorts for capris. How did the test go? She ran a brush through her hair. It started out rough, but then I think I did really well. I won't know the results for a little while. You were right about the first question. It was asking why we wanted the position. That means you were prepared for it. Good. She could hear Max move around the living room. Who's this? Paget looked as she went into the bathroom and saw him holding up a picture frame. The cheesy Christmas photos? Tiffany and Charles with their children. Tiff is my sister. Paget and Tiffany? Your parents have a thing for jewelry? Max chuckled. My mother did. Not sure my father had any say in the matter. Paget swiped on some mascara and lip gloss. It was quick and easy. Plus, they were going to see the stars, not anything terribly special. Paget flipped off the lights as she came back into the living room. Ready? Wow, that was fast, Max smiled. You look great. Paget shrugged, but secretly she was pleased by his compliment. Thanks. Should I bring anything? Just yourself. And maybe a blanket in case it gets cold. He held up the blanket that usually covered the couch. It was folded neatly over his arm. I've already got the telescope, so we are all set. Where did you get the telescope? Paget couldn't help but ask as she laced up her sneakers. AAA. Amateur Astronomers Association. I borrowed it from a member. As long as it gets back to him soon, he's cool with it. Nice. Paget locked up her apartment door and was surprised when Max let her up the stairs instead of down. I talked to the superintendent and he was kind enough to give me the groove key. Turns out, you're one of his favorite tenants. He says you pay on time the most. I do try, Paget said wryly. Five floors later, they managed to get to the roof door, and she held the blanket while Max worked the key in the lock. On top of the roof, it was a little cooler with a breeze in the summer air. Paget could hear the traffic far below, and the lights of the buildings around had a different perspective from this high up. It was rather nice. She wondered why she had never come up here before. They spread out the blanket, and Max set up the telescope. They had fun looking around the neighborhood with it, finding places that they knew and spying on a few people eating at a local diner, before pointing it to the stars. How many people belong to this amateur astronomer's club? Paget suddenly asked. Quite a few, Max said absently as he worked on the focus, and she looked thoughtfully at the street below. How many of those people are shady and probably using their telescopes to look into people's apartments? At least part of the time. It was her mother's voice in her head. Paget tried to see the world through less biased eyes, but it was hard when she had such a critical woman to raise her. Probably only a couple. Why? Worried someone's going to spy on you? Max teased Paget. You are gorgeous, but anyone with binoculars and a good vantage point can do the same. I think I'll start closing my drapes a little more. Paget came back to the blanket and sat near the telescope. With a flourish, Max presented the sight of the telescope to her, and Paget took a tentative peek. The stars were numerous and bright compared to the night sky in the city. Wow. It's the light pollution. 
because there are so many lights on in the city, a lot of them pointing to the sky as well as the ground, they create what's called light pollution in the atmosphere. It makes it hard to see what's really up there in the heavens. If we were to go outside the city, the sky would be amazing and we could see a lot more with the naked eye. The telescope makes a great difference. Max leaned in close and gently showed Paget how to maneuver the telescope. He led her through a cosmic tour of various constellations that he knew. It was pretty interesting. How do you know so much about this? Paget asked. I studied it from a book. It's the myths that I like the best, because nearly every star or constellation has a story attached to it, Max said in that sexy low voice of his. It sent a little thrill through Paget. Plus, I've been going to some of the free seminars the Amateur Astronomers Club hosts. What about that one? She leaned back so that he could have a look. Max tilted the telescope for her. The star is called Vega, but in Chinese myth her name is Qin Ni. She was a weaver and made amazing things like gowns from brocade and the clouds. She was married to a cow herder and fell deeply in love with him. But because of her love, she forgot all of her talent to weave, and her parents became very angry. Her father made her into a star, and then made her husband into a star called Altar. In his anger, her father separated them by the Silver River, otherwise known as the Milky Way. Once a year, on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, a flock of magpies form a bridge to reunite the lovers. He leaned back until he was laying on the blanket, hands under his head and looking up into the sky. He looked so comfy and relaxed that Paget laid down beside him. That's a sad story. It is. A lot of the myths are sad or have lessons to be learned from them. What about your story? Paget dared to ask softly. He reached out to tuck a piece of hair behind her ear, then gently took her hand. My story? Well, once upon a time, there was a boy who was given everything he ever wanted. He did good in school, he had a lot of fun, he worked really hard. Then he had a disagreement that couldn't be resolved, and because he stood his ground, he lost everything he had and almost everyone he knew, but he wouldn't change it for the world because he did what was right, and because now he has real friends, a real purpose. He also met you. A real purpose? she asked curiously. Paget knew that he helped out Ed, but she wasn't sure if there was something else that he was spending his time on. Trying to make the world a better place. That's definitely a good thing to do, Paget agreed. It was a little vague, but maybe he just meant helping other people like at a soup kitchen or something. And that was okay, he was at least doing something. Paget liked this. Laying down next to each other, holding hands, and just talking. It was the first time she had ever done this, and she hoped it wouldn't be the last. What is your story? Max returned the question to her. Mine? I gave you mine. Barely. There are no real details. Wife, kids. Paget raised an eyebrow. No wife, no kids. Now, stop stalling. Unless it's really terrible, he teased. I'd hate to spoil such a nice night. Paget rolled her eyes and looked up at the sky. I had a good childhood. I loved my life. I went to the right school, did the right things. I was wooed and married in my first year of college. I dropped out and became the perfect housewife. No kids. Did you want kids? Max inquired. Very much. Paget didn't mean to, but she couldn't help a tear. She wiped it away angrily. It was an old wound, and her situation wasn't likely to change any time soon, so she didn't know why she kept tearing at the scab. He passed away in an accident last year. I feel like I'm just finally figuring my life out. Max slowly pulled her into his arms, and she took a deep breath, settling into his embrace. He felt warm, solid, dependable. He was also so nice and comfortable. A soft, worn shirt with a steady heartbeat. Paget could feel herself relax. I think you're doing a good job. Really? Paget asked dryly. She felt like she was a wreck. She cried. She was a klutz. She was trying, but she felt like the bills were going to eat her alive sometimes. Paget loved what she was working towards, to become a broadcast personality, but that wouldn't happen for some time yet. Until then, it was going to remain a struggle. You've got a roof over your head. You pay your rent on time, according to your landlord. I know you have food in your cupboards. You have friends who really like you and wish you'd spent more time with them. You're trying to learn to do something you've always wanted to do. I'd say you're pretty blessed. Paget realized that her situation could be much worse than what it was now. She was blessed, and Max had gently reminded her of that. Thank you. For what? For tonight? Paget yawned and closed her eyes. It's been really nice. 
She must have been tired still, because the next thing Paget knew, she was being laid down on her bed. Someone took off her shoes and pulled the covers over her. The hall light was on, but the bedroom was dark, and in her sleepy confusion, Paget asked, Gary? The figure arranging her covers paused, and reality dumped back on her. Gary was dead. This was Max. He gently pushed her hair out of her face and gave Paget a lingering kiss on her forehead. No, sweetheart, not Gary. Paget was glad that the dark hid her humiliating blush. I'm sorry, Max. It's okay. Get some sleep. I'll lock the door after myself. But it wasn't okay. She knew he was interested in her, and she had accidentally called him her dead husband's name. What could she say to make it better and not worse? Paget listened miserably as he left, the door clicking softly. She curled up into a ball and wished her mouth would just stop talking before her brain could think. The next day at the café, Paget was surprised to see both Max and Adam come in together. It was obvious that they didn't realize she was working since she had just come back from the washroom and spotted them first. Paget hung back for a moment indecisive. She wasn't sure she was ready to talk to Max after last night. Calling him Gary was a huge blunder, and she had no idea what to say to him to make things better. Paget didn't mean to eavesdrop, but she must have stood there in the corridor too long, and they were choosing a table right beside the washrooms, and she could hear them clearly. Paget realized they were talking about the other night when Max had taken her to see the stars, and the next thing she knew, she was pressed up against the wall, one ear cocked around the corner, hoping to know what Max thought of the whole thing. Cowardly of her, for sure, but she desperately wanted to know. How did it go? Adam was positively beaming as he sipped his frothy coffee. It was going great, Max said with a grimace. Was? Adam picked up on the important word quickly. What does that mean? Did something happen? Sort of. Things were going really good, and then at the end of the evening, she said something. Max shrugged. What? Adam looked at Max in concern. I thought that there was some chemistry between you two. Max sighed. I think she still loves her husband. Her ex? She's been divorced for about a year. Did she tell you she was divorced? She told me she was a widow. Adam thought about it for a minute. Wait. No, I think I just assumed she was divorced. I don't think she actually said. Puts a bit of a different slant on things. Max slowly drank from his black coffee. Wow, still in love with a dead dude? That's hard to compete against. What are you going to do? asked Adam. I wouldn't have set you guys up if I didn't think it wasn't going to work. I'm sorry, man. Relax, I'm not blaming you. I really do like her, and I'm not in this for the short game. I'll just be patient. Wait and be her friend. At some point, maybe she'll be ready and I'll be there. Paget is worth it. Adam sighed. What if she's never ready? Then I will make an amazing friend, and hopefully I won't be too disappointed if nothing more happens. Max studied Adam, who was watching Dix. What about you? You've been trying to set up Paget and I, but isn't there someone special in your life? Adam snorted. Dude, look at me. Is there a problem with you? Max raised an eyebrow. Guys like you get the girls. Guys like me don't. I'm six foot, pushing 300 pounds. I don't play for the NFL, so I'm just a fat guy. Girls aren't into that. Max looked at Dix with her colorful hair and piercings. Somehow, I don't think she's into the NFL or the conventional. Maybe if you talked to her, it would help. What would I even say? Adam hid behind his drink, staring into its depths rather than look at Dix or Max. What does she like to do? What does she like to do? Find out an event that you think she would go to and ask. Or tell her that she makes really good coffee. Or say that you like her hair. As long as you actually like her hair. Otherwise, that could get messy. Adam liked Dix. Paget had no idea. She was also incredibly happy that Max still wanted to go out with her. She didn't know why, since she wasn't exactly looking for a relationship, but she liked Max a lot. Dick spotted Paget hiding out and pointed to her wrist, phantomiming a watch that she didn't wear. Fortunately, neither Max or Adam had noticed. Paget helped up a finger, asking for a moment, to which Dix rolled her eyes and then went back to forcefully, pleasantly serving customers. Paget came up behind Adam and Max, laying a hand on each of their shoulders, leaning in. Dix is an artist. Adam jumped a mile and almost spilled his drink. Max was laughing at Adam's reaction and trying not to, hiding his mouth behind a hand as his shoulders shook. 
You nearly gave me a heart attack, Adam hissed. There's an exit at, at the Meyer Gallery. They're taking up-and-coming artists, but Dix is worried that her art isn't good enough. She wants to scope it out and see what's being accepted. You should take her. Paget turned to Max. Thank you for the stars. I'm sorry I fell asleep on our first date, but if you're willing to go out again, I'd like to try a second date. I'd like that, too. He really was very handsome when he smiled. Are you working closing? She happily nodded. I'll come by and walk you home, Max offered. Thank you. Paget gave his hand a squeeze, then made her way to the counter to help Dix. As she left, she could hear Adam say, She fell asleep? Dude, that is so not exciting. You're lucky she's giving you a second chance. Where have you been? The rush came in, Dick said as she efficiently put together an order of drinks with all sorts of twists and shots of chocolate or caramel. Paget rushed to fill the bakery orders for her, hoping to get on her good side again. Eavesdropping, Paget smiled. I hope it was a soap opera worthy, because if you don't share and it isn't good, I'm not going to forgive you for leaving me high and dry. Dix pushed the tray of drinks at a customer with a smile that didn't reach her eyes. Thank you for your order. Please come again. We'll talk, Paget assured her as she took another customer's orders. Just as suddenly as the crowd came, it thinned out and they managed to handle it. Paget looked at the clock and twenty minutes had disappeared in the blink of an eye. Dix wiped down the counter and Paget restocked the bakery display. Finally, Dix turned to Paget, crossing her arms and raising a pierced eyebrow. Spill. Hi, Adam. Paget smiled at Adam, who had approached the counter behind Dix, and grabbed the tote for bussing tables, leaving them alone. She went to Max and picked up Adam's now empty cup. Did you coach him? Max pulled out a chair for her, and she sat down to watch the show. I did, but I'm betting every word I'd said just disappeared on the poor guy. Adam was stumbling over his words, and Dix was looking at him much the same way she might an insect that had dared to enter her space. Not that she wanted to kill it, but why was it even there? This is not looking good. Max quickly grabbed Paget's hand to stop her from interfering. Don't rescue them. This is a momentous occasion for Adam, whether he gets turned down or not. He needs to do this on his own. Paget left her hand in Max's, liking the feel of it. I want to apologize for the way the other night ended. You don't have to. No, I do, Paget insisted. I didn't mean to fall asleep on you, plus I definitely did not mean to call you Gary. Gary was my husband, and it's past time that I let go of all the feelings I had. I really do like you, Max. Maybe we could take it slowly and see how things go. I think you're someone amazingly special, Paget. If you want to take things slow, then that's what we'll do. Max brought his other hand over their joined ones. Thank you. He really was an understanding guy. Paget could feel herself slipping further under his spell, but was interrupted by Dix at the counter. You what? Dix practically shrieked. Just because I have blue hair, piercings, and maybe a tattoo does not mean that I am that kind of girl. Adam gaped in surprise. I meant, I mean, I... Out! Dix pointed to the door, and when Adam didn't move, she grabbed a blueberry muffin from the display and made like she was going to throw it at him. Now! Quickly, Paget went to the counter and put a hand on Dix's arm, rescuing the muffin. What is going on here? This perverted Sasquatch asked me if I was an exhibitionist. I have two psychiatrist parents. I know what the clinical term means. I was trying to ask you if you were an artist, and if you were interested in going to the Meyer exhibition, but my mouth mixed up words together, Adam nearly shouted. He looked surprised that he had gotten a full sentence in Dix's presence. I do that when I get nervous sometimes. What? Dick stared at him. I heard you like art. I was asking you out not to see, he gestured at her. Not that it wouldn't be nice to see. Oh, boy. Out! Dick's practically vibrated. Max grabbed Adam by the shoulders. Come on, big guy. Retreat might be in order. Paget watched Max lead a disappointed Adam out the door. She put the blueberry muffin away, warily watching Dix furiously sweep the floor. He didn't mean it. He's a sweet guy, and he likes you. There was a snort. He's had a crush on you for a while now? He just got up the courage to talk to you. I told him about the Meyer exhibit. Paget grabbed some napkins for the dispensers. He gets stage fright, and apparently has trouble talking to girls that he likes. Dix's shoulders shook, and she burst out laughing. 
I thought he was gay. What? Patchett asked in disbelief. All this time, I thought he was gay, she howled, holding onto the broom for support. Every day he comes in and he has a drink or eats something, and I thought he was gay. I thought he was into your boyfriend, which was funny because he set you two up. Patchett really didn't know what to say to that. He's been checking me out the whole time, and I thought he was gay. She wiped her eyes. I really have no ability to judge people. First Giorgio, then Adam. Paget put the napkins down and leaned against the counter. I don't think you can put Giorgio and Adam into the same category. Giorgio stole from you. Adam actually likes you. He asked me if I liked exhibitionists or if I was one, Dick said dryly. If you're outgoing, Paget shrugged, not seeing the big deal. You are, sometimes. Besides, he explained that he mixed the two words of artist and exhibition together accidentally. A clinical exhibitionist is a flasher. Dick's mimed flashing with a pretend trench coat. No. Paget looked at her in some horror. She could feel poor Adam's pain. Poor Adam. Poor Adam, Dick snorted. Goes to show what always on a guy's mind. That was some Freudian slip. He didn't mean it, though. Paget said, defending him. She wondered about her own slip in calling Max by Gary's name. He really does like you and was very nervous to try to ask you out. Dix rolled her eyes. Tell him Thursday at five, be here at the cafe. Tell him not to speak. It's probably better that way. Thank you, Dix. I'm sure you'll have a wonderful time, Paget smiled happily. Are you going to put napkins in those dispensers? They won't do it themselves. Dix resumed sweeping, her version of saying the subject was closed. Paget grinned as she grabbed the napkins. She couldn't help but tease Dix. Maybe we can go on a double date sometime. Mrs. Brown's social media and broadcasting class felt like it was going so slow. Paget thought Mrs. Brown was going over the most boring material possible. She didn't care about how signals ran through electrical currents or how it was all translated through the air and finally came to life in a radio. She didn't want to take away the magic and know the specifics. It was enough to know that what was said in Broadcasting Booth could be listened to miles away, with the Internet even all over the world. She sighed and dutifully typed a few notes in her laptop. She didn't fully understand this part of the course and worried it was going to badly affect her grade. It didn't help that her mind kept wandering to Max, the way he smiled. How good he smelled lately. The fact that he easily carried her from the roof of the apartment to her bed and behaved like a perfect gentleman. It was kind of like a fairy tale, and her stomach flipped at the thought. He was so wonderful in so many ways and seemed to really like her, if his conversation with Adam that she had overheard was anything to go by. What did he said? He was in it for the long term? That she was worth waiting for? Paget bit her lip and tried not to blush with pleasure. She found that she had been typing like a silly schoolgirl, Paget R, Mrs. Paget R, Mrs. Max R. She quickly deleted the silliness on her screen. She really did need to learn Max's last name. Not to doodle it with her own in hearts, of course. Probably. Mrs. Brown shut off the projector, and Paget realized that she had daydreamed through an entire section of class. As much as she liked Max, she had to start paying attention and stop thinking about him. Paget shut her laptop and put all her materials in her messenger bag. Class was nearly done. If I could have everyone's attention, Mrs. Brown clapped her hands, I'd like to announce the top grade and student who will be starting early in the broadcasting booth. The student will be paired with student producer Melanie Krauts, who is in the senior year of the program. Everyone in the class paid close attention. It was a coveted spot, and Paget could feel herself tense. She wanted it badly. She only hoped that she had done enough to on the test to achieve the opportunity. The test was a nice indicator to learn exactly how much you've all retained and have studied ahead in the course. It also was extremely important to know what motivated each of you. This meant that the very first question of the test was worth 50% of the mark, she said. Some students in the class groaned. It was obvious they wished they had spent more time on the first question now that they knew it had been so significant. Paget was glad Mrs. Brown had given her the tip to pay special attention to the first question. She had done her best to answer it fully before continuing with the rest of the test. With a score of 92%, our new amateur broadcaster is Paget Williams, Mrs. Brown announced happily. Paget couldn't believe it. 
She'd worked so hard, and she wanted it. Truthfully, she hadn't expected it. Especially after a rough start that day. This was wonderful. It was going to build her portfolio. This was going to give her the best chance in her future career. Adam, Sasha, and Mariah came over to congratulate her, as did some of the other students. Paget received their goodwill in a happy daze. As the class ended, Mrs. Brown approached her and held out a file. "'You'll need to look over the forms, sign the waiver, and return them to me,' Mrs. Brown added another file. "'This is your training package and schedule. Once you've passed the training and Melanie is satisfied that you're ready, we'll start you with a half-hour segment twice a week. Welcome to Radio Broadcasting, Paget.' Paget shook her teacher's hand and took the files. "'I am so thankful for this opportunity, Mrs. Brown. I really appreciate it.' "'You have earned it,' Mrs. Brown smiled. "'I enjoyed reading your answer to the first question. "'It seems like you have a real passion for broadcasting.' "'I do,' Paget smiled gratefully. "'Thank you again.' Paget took her leave of Mrs. Brown. Right in the middle of the noisy hall, she grabbed her cell phone and called Max. She couldn't wait to share the news with him. It was three rings before he picked up. "'Hey, beautiful.' Paget smiled. Hi. Aren't you supposed to be in school? Max asked. Paget could hear machinery running in the background. I had good news. I got the spot. The all-important broadcasting spot that you've been worrying over for the past two weeks? Max whistled sharply at someone. Shut it off. I'm talking to my girl. Talking to his girl, Paget blushed. She liked the idea of being his girl. The machinery quieted down. Yes, the very one. Then we need to celebrate, Max said. I'm so proud of you, Paget. You're amazing. Paget smiled. I had a little help from you. Thank you, Max. You wrote and aced the test. We are going to celebrate this. Are you working tonight? Paget stifled some disappointment. Yes. That's okay, Max said easily. If you're not too tired afterward, I've got an idea for an hour or so. Just bring your appetite. Okay, Paget said happily. His idea turned out to be a picnic event in Eden Park, a park about twenty minutes away by cab. The park was beautifully landscaped and impressively large. Old-fashioned looking lamps lit the paths, lending it a peaceful atmosphere in the warm night. Max brought her to the fountain, where a little bistro set was waiting with a checkered tablecloth, a vase of flowers, two glasses of wine, and a small plate of assorted appetizers waiting on her pan lid and towel to keep them warm. He removed the reserve sign and seated Paget. How did you set all of this up? she wondered. I have good friends, Max smiled in satisfaction. This is just stop number one. Really? Paget was amused. He really was such a romantic. We are celebrating, Max responded as he took her hand. He proceeded to ask her all about her new position and what it entailed, what her schedule would be like. Soon enough the appetizers were gone and Max offered his arm so that they could move to the next spot. Paget leaned into him and enjoyed the walk along the paths in the summer night air. She couldn't believe he had gone through this much trouble for her. He led her to a small garden maze, full of hedges that were hip height. A checkered tablecloth covered the bistro table that waited with their main course, a lit candle and two red wines. Paget allowed him to seat her again and enjoyed unwrapping the foiled salmon, potatoes, and mixed vegetables. She didn't know who had cooked them and gotten the meals to the park, but their timing was perfect because the plate was still hot and the fish perfectly cooked. Idly, Paget wondered if Max was this romantic over a simple celebration dinner, what would he do when he proposed? Paget put the brakes on that thought and concentrated on the lovely meal with Max. She had no right thinking along those lines. They were barely dating. Dessert was on the edge of the band shell. It consisted of chocolate cheesecake, Paget's favorite. Coffee for Max and tea for Paget were waiting, hot and ready on a tiny bistro set. This time, the tablecloth was floral and a small speaker was playing music. I think you cheated, Paget closed her eyes as she took a small bite of the cheesecake on her fork. It tasted divine. How is that? Max asked, sipping his black coffee. His eyes twinkled. I think Dix helped you with the menu choices, Max nodded. She may have had a little input. I have no idea how you are going to top this, Paget said honestly. It's been a perfectly wonderful night. Well, I look forward to trying, Max smiled, gazing at her. And if I succeed, I look forward to topping that experience, and then the next one, and the next. That's a big commitment, Paget remarked and speared another forkful of cake. Max nodded, content. It is. 
Padgett smiled, finishing the cheesecake. She was too full, but didn't regret it one bit. They finished their drinks, and Max led her back through the park again, back to the front gates where the cab was waiting. Back to her apartment building, he waited patiently for her to open the door. Thank you, Max. It was an amazing evening. Paget smiled up at him. He really was wonderful. She was going to have to thank Adam for introducing them. He dipped his head and gave her a tender kiss. Paget leaned against him and enjoyed the gentle caress. The thought of inviting him up to her apartment flitted across her mind, but he reluctantly broke off the kisses. Good night, Paget. She leaned against the wall and watched him disappear into the night. Hugging the sensations he had released in her, she made her way upstairs. It had been an amazing day. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of The Reverse Cinderella. Also, please click the bell for notifications so that you don't miss any videos. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.